Welcome back to the channel guys and today we're talking about what do you carry in your tackle box and why. So just a quick tackle box talk and what I carry in mine and why I carry it. Right guys, as I said, just a basic of what I carry in my tackle box and why I carry it. First of all, I start off with a half decent pair of scales. You never know when you get that PB fish and you want to make sure it is, you can double check it and there's a measurement on the side as well. These are the uh, NGTs, I think the cracking value for money, worth having a check out, you can pick them up, Amazon, eBay, most tackle shops will sell a version of these. A measurement guide of some sort guys, at the end of the day we've got keep limits for a reason. One of these doesn't have to be this kind of thing, it can be a measuring tape, as you've seen Earlier on in the video, I have one on my weighing scales as well, but that coincides with these guys. Sea Angling Diary. You can get them. I think they're on Facebook. I think they're on Twitter. You can download the app. It's a wonderful bit of kit. I said you can uh, put on where you were fishing, the time you started fishing, the date you were fishing site you were fishing, method you were fishing, equipment and then it goes on to the fish you've caught, size of the fish, how many you kept, how many you released and notes. So if you pick up a PB and you've got a memory like a sieve and you don't record things like I do, handy little bit of kit. They send this out to you free of charge when you sign up to the Sea Angling Diary. Well they did when I ordered this and they also send you this booklet. Now in this booklet it tells you all different keep sizes, what the regulations are for certain things. Uh, cod, argument's sake, is 35 centimetres on here. Haddock, 30 centimetres. Herring, 30 centimetres. Horse mackerel, 15 centimetres. Ling, 63 centimetres. Lobsters, 8.7. Mackerel should be 20 centimetres. Place is 22. Uh, Pollock is 30, uh, sole is 24 and whiting is 27. That's the minimum landing size in the EU. I know we're coming out of the EU so I don't know what all our rules are going to be. But in this book it gives you fish identification as well. And I said the size keep limits to what we can and can't. Always handy to have. I said you can go on and download their app to your phone. You can go, I think they're on Facebook and I think they're on Twitter. Always worth having a look at, guys. Next thing to make sure you've got, guys, I'm not saying you have to have this brand, this is the brand I have, is this is the Rapala filleting knife. Sharp, all times, sharp and after use. A good filleting knife to prep your bait or even if you want to prep the fish that you've caught at the beach instead of bringing it home with you will always help you out. As I said that's the brand I've gone for. I've had this filleting knife oof, many a year since I was a teenager and I'm in my late 30s now. Look after your knife and your knife will look after you. And with your knife, guys, with your knife, some sort of sharpening implement. Because you never know when you're going to need to sharpen your knife. You can sharpen your hooks. You can sharpen a lot of things. A little diamond one weighs nothing. Always handy to keep it in a tackle box with you. Last thing you want to be doing is losing that fish because you've got a blunt hook or having an accident because your knife isn't sharp and you're trying to cut your bait or something with a blunt knife. A blunt knife is a dangerous knife guys. Trust me, I've been in the catering industry 
a long time. Always have a sharp knife. Always. Next thing I always carry with me is a good pair of scissors. You can use them for your bait, you can use them for your snoods, cutting your line, sorting out your tangles, those infamous birdies on your multipliers. Cheap enough, I think they're about five, six quid, but brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. Supposed to be stainless steel, but what is stainless steel these days? It's not what it used to be, but as I said, cheap enough and always get you out of a bind. And to go with your scissors, guys, makes life a lot easier when you're trying to do your lines and your bits and bobs and getting tighter to the knots. Good pair of nail clippers. Handy little thing. Can make life a lot easier for you, especially as I said, when your hands are cold and you're trying to get rid of those tag ends. You haven't got a knife or scissors with you. Just nail clippers. And on the note of looking after your knife, guys, a chopping board. You can go into the pound shop and pick two of these up for a pound. They're lightweight. I put a bit of string on mine so if I'm fishing off the wall or something, I can just drop it down the side into the sea, give it a quick wash down. Take up barely any room in your box and it will look after your knife. Saves you uh, running your knife against the stones or the gravel or the beach. Cheap chopping board, does the job, perfect. Next bit of kit guys, some sort of first aid. As I said, with fishing, with the hooks and the knife and things, accidents do happen when we're out fishing. So something to be able to help yourself in some sort of way is a good idea. This is a basic one. This contains four antiseptic wipes. Uh, two sterilized dressings, 7 centimeters by 5.3 centimeters, 10 waterproof plasters, 1.9 centimeter by 7.2 centimeter, 6 waterproof plasters, 1.9 centimeter by 3.8, 2 waterproof plasters, 6, point, uh, 6 centimeters by 4.5 centimeters, and it obviously has got a first aid leaflet in there as well. So it's some sort of form of covering up a cut. If you want to carry on fishing it'll help you out i said you can sort a personal one to your personal needs on where you're going and what you're doing but always carry some form of first aid with you and on the first aid as well we're now into coldness of winter guys these little hand warmers you can pick four packs up from the pound shop they're ideal it's not just to keep yourself warm if anything happens and you need to warm the body up, any shock of any sort. A couple of these will do you good. Put two in your pocket, two, uh, one each in your gloves, put your hands in, they'll warm you up. They seriously will. For 25 pence a pack, four for a pound in the pound shop, you can't go wrong. And as said, I've used these many a times when your hands have got cold and you want to be trying to get your bait sorted or dealing with that fish brilliant little bit of kit I know guys, I know you're all going to have a laugh at this one but wet wipes keeping your hands clean I said if going on off the last bit of the video if you cut yourself you want to be able to clean yourself up make sure your hands are nice and sterile I know there's sterile wipes in the first aid kit but quick way of cleaning your hands make things a little bit more sanitized for you so a pack of baby wipes I said you can pick up pick them up i think you can get the cheaper ones for like 35 pence a pack but they weigh nothing in the box always handy keep yourself clean next bit that i always carry in my box and i'm without fail is a towel of some sort drying your hands cleaning your hands make a bandage out of it you can do many things with it I nick the wife's old tea towels so utilizing things that I've got around the house you don't have to go out and buy a Pacific tea towel anything will do just some sort of towel said so dry your hands keep your hands warm as well with them cleaning them handy bit of kit always to have in in the bag 
next thing I carry guys a lighter of some sort because you never know when you're on the beach and it could potentially save your life if it's cold and you can't take it you can quickly get a little bit of fire with driftwood or any scraps of rubbish that are around get yourself warm so a lighter most people will think why carry a lighter but never know always come in handy next bit of equipment guys a torch this is my backup one this isn't my main one my main one's upstairs charging but I always carry a backup torch and a small torch few reason it's light enough you can hold on something if you're on a rock mark and your head torches fail for any reason you've always got that little backup once you can see where you are so people say I carry a bit too much but I'd rather be safe than sorry I'd rather take that extra little bit of weight and know I'm safe so a backup head torch and then a small little third torch as well just to keep yourself safe you never know Something could happen, a rogue wave could come over and take your head torches out, but then you've got that third one. You've always got something, some chance that one will stay dry and then you can get off that rock mark or the beach or whatever and you can see where you're going. So lighting is a big factor for when you're night fishing. Some of us guys carry head torches that take batteries. So spare batteries in a little waterproof packet Keep them as dry as you possibly can. I know it seems that I'm carrying quite a bit, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather take that extra little bit of weight and make sure when I'm at a mark, I'm not thinking, I have, have I got this, have I got that? I know what's in my box. I know what I have got. I know I've got enough to see me through a session, not have to worry about, I've got to pack up because I've not got enough gear with me. As you can see in the picture, guys, I keep my butter tubs. Cracking little storage things for going in your box. There's my Solent Seagoo. Goes in the bottom of the box, the lid goes on top of that. And another ideal one for carrying is your weights. Some people have got the conversion kits, some people haven't got the money to pay for the conversion kits, or some people make their own. Mine go in there, bottom of the box, couple of weights, see me through a session, and they're not all over my box. I know where they are, they're in one place, stored, neat and tidy. Saves you a lot of money, these things. And on that, guys, some people love it, some people hate it. I like the stuff. Soul and Seagoo. They do a mixture of different ones. These are just a few I've got. I've got the lug. I've got the cart. I've got the squid. I have had the other ones as well, and then I've got the fluorescent glow-in-the-dark, lug, ragworm, sand eel, and cart again. Said I have had a selection of other stuff. All these products that I'm showing you today, guys, I've paid for with my own money. I've not been donated anything, I'm not sponsored by anything to promote these products. These are what I use and what I recommend. Next bit of kit I carry, guys. Some silicone beads. Fluorescent glow in the dark ones. These ones are from TPA Attractor, the Portsmouth Angler. Worth going over and checking his site out, guys. There's some cracking deals on there. Glow in the dark ones you can light up. You can use your head torch, you can use a fluorescent torch. Don't take long to glue them up. That was just a quick charge. So always handy to keep them in there because a lot of fish do feed under UV. So it's worth a try and worth having them in the box. For the price they cost, it's worth popping over. That again is Portsmouth Angler TPA Attractors. So Go and give him a check out, guys. Next in my box, guys, is some sort of removal tool. Some pliers or some forceps. Some people have got the disgorgers, 
some people like the forceps, some people like pliers. It helps the fish if you can get that hook out and release it and it can go back and fight for another day. So some sort of removal tools to help you and help the fish. Next bit of the gear I always carry, guys, is a selection of baiting needles. This one happens to be the one from Trident Tackle. Cracking bit of kit. But you don't have to go that length. You can have the smaller ones. And then you can also go for the baiting needles. But if you want to do a cocktail, put a squid on that side. Put a bit of bluey on that side. Bind them together. So handy bit of kit. You can pick them up cheap enough. You can make them yourselves. There's a lot of videos out on YouTube showing people how to make these. I think uh, Mark Williams' Sea Angling Adventures does one. Uh, Sandman Tackle Time makes some as well. So go and check those guys out if you want to make your own. But they are cheap enough to buy. I think you can get like two of these versions. I think £1.50, £2. So I said, if you're using your worm or you want to do different things, these little things are godsend. And on that matter of using these, some form of baiting elastic. I have just gone on to these uh, extra fine karaoke bait elastics just to see how they're doing. They were £13.83 for 10 reels. So sometimes buying it in bulk saves you those few pennies. So it's worth having some sort of bait elastic. I also have the Anova bait elastic with the Anova bait machine. Now, for myself, I find it's a bit bulky on the mark, trying to hold on to it. Yes, it's a good idea, keeps the bait elastic dry. It is pre-tensioned as well, but I said some form of bait elastic. Present your bait, get your bait out there further, more streamlined. Next thing I carry in my box, guys, always some sort of spare line. I've got the Rovex Devil uh, monofilament line. This is £18, 0.3mm, 985 yards on that spool. And then for my rough ground fishing, I like to go with the uh, Daiwa Sensor Surf. £25, 465 metres on that. So always carry some form of a spare line with you because you never know that time when you get snagged off and you lose a bit of line or if you're fishing multipliers and you hit a birdie. Last thing you want to be doing is on a mark and you've not got some sort of backup line or as I do carry on many occasions a backup reel. You don't want to travel to a mark and then figure out I've either got to walk all the way back to the car to get something or I've got to pack up and go home. So carry in a spare spool of line or spare reel can be a lifesaver to you. Hook length, hook snoods, amnesia. I like the amnesia £30. I said when you're on the mark and you may have just lost uh, lost your snood. Always handy to have a little bit there. You pay for what you get, and this is top quality stuff. So, always handy to carry it. As I said, carry it with your extra line. Never know when that can help you out. Next thing, guys, is some decent form of shock leader. A lot of us guys will fish big weights and big baits. So a shock leader is quite important for the line that you fish in. My personal choice is, as you can see, is the Super Shock. It's 80 pound, 150 meters, uh, 0.75 millimeters thick. It leaves a lovely knot when you tie it. It's not too bulky. Doesn't put too much strain on the eyes when you're casting with it. So some form of shock leader 
will do you well. Another one is, I don't use this as a shock leader. I use this purely for my rig bodies. It's 80 pound, 0.85 millimeter thick, Kaoki eye cast, four ounce spool. Always carry it with me, though I do carry pre-made rigs. I always have rigs made up, ready to go, and a rig wallet full of different rigs, ready for the different sessions and the different species that I'm targeting. So, though I've got my rig wallet, I always carry a spool, just in case I do need to make a rig up on the mark, or the mark is fishing a certain way, I've always got some rig body to quickly make up a rig to suit the kind of fishing that I'm making if I haven't got it in my rig wallet. The next item I carry guys, a selection of hooks. Though you've made your rigs up, you may get to a mark and something may be happening and you're thinking, I need to change my hooks up. My hooks have gone dull. You've snapped a hook. You've got the wrong size hook on the trace and you think, I need to go smaller, I need to go bigger. Selection. I carry 40 Aberdeens. I carry 60 Kaoki. 20 Aberdeens. Just a selection of different hooks for different fish. You may be there and you think, I fancy going after a conga or I fancy going after a, a ray. You may want to change to the 60 Kokis. You may want to just go after something smaller. You've got your four O's. Something even smaller again. You may want to go after, at this time of the year, pin whiting. I know they're gutsy buggers and they'll take up to a six and an eight-o hook, but you may want to just drop your size hooks and go after that different species, a place, a flounder. You can go smaller. Yet yeah, again, I do carry some smaller hooks. I carry some size ones and some size twos, but I always have a different variety of hooks with me at all times, just in case. Next bit of kit I always carry with me guys, though I pre-make rigs at home. A bit of terminal tackle. You never know, as I said, you could be on the mark, you've used up, you've had a rough day's fishing, you've lost your gear, you need to make something up. It's always handy to have something that you can carry a little bit of extra gear, some swivels, some snap-on clips, some beads, quick links, Always handy to have that extra little something just to be safe. As I said, you don't want to be on a mark and you've not got that extra bit of gear that you need to quickly make up. As I said, guys, I'm a big fan of this gear. Tried and tackle. I haven't got any of the aero pulleys with me at the moment. But you get the aero pulleys, the termalinks, the roto splashdowns, and they're cheap enough. I said, go on to Amazon Direct, um, not Amazon, sorry, go on to Trident Tackle directly. He sells these. I just put a £26 order in with Trident, and that's a lot of gear for what Trident sell. So, spare ta terminal tackle. Makes your life a lot easier. And with the terminal tackle, guys, a lot of us fish a lot of rough grounds. So some sort of rotten bottom. At the end of the day, you want to pull that fish back. You don't want to be losing your entire gear. I'd rather lose a weight than lose a big fish. So you don't always have to go along the lines of buying the rotten bottom clips. You can make your own. All you need is some Gemini bent clips. It doesn't have to be Gemini. You can get any kind of brand. But some bait clips. And then you can make your own. You have one that side, one that side. You now have a rotten bottom, some 14 pound line or whatever pound line you want to go. You can go weaker, you can go a little bit stronger, but that splashes out, that drops down. So you've made a rotten bottom clip yourself. 
I said, they're not the cheapest of things to go and buy rotten bottom clips, but I think all of us carry some kind of version of bent clips, bait clips. So two of these bad boys and you've made yourself a rotten bottom. Saves a bit of money and as I said, you're more likely to get that bigger fish back by using a rotten bottom instead of getting snagged up, losing your weight, your trace, shock leader, little bait clips. And with your homemade rotten bottom guys, a little trick that I picked up off uh, Carting and Bay Fishing Adventures, Dave. Let's go over and give him a shout and a subscribe. He's just hit 1500 subscribers in less than a year. So he's done really, really well and proud of him. Well then Dave, is take your line, give your weight a twist, a couple of twists. And what that does is, if you can see that guys, it rolls the line up for you. So your line will be out of the way. So there's your rotten bottom. When that casts out and hits the sea, that clears the line. The line doesn't get tangled up on the rig. So it's a cracking little tip from Cardigan Bay Fishing Adventures. Go give him a check and uh, like, share and subscribe if you enjoy his content. Getting down towards the end now, guys. For you new beginners who are learning and aren't tying your own rigs, and I don't tie all of mine, I'm not too ashamed to admit, I go to the rig shack. He ties some awesome rigs. We've got some up and overs, two hook flappers, pulley panels. He does a variety of all different types. He's got an eBay store and he's also on Facebook. So if you want to get hold of the Rig Shack, go give him a shout out guys. Some awesome rigs at good competitive prices. So go check him out and uh, see what he can do for you. Rig tubing guys. I got this idea from Mark Williams. Uh, he was trying it out on his pulley panels and he had the same problem that I was having up until I started using this. There's about 100 mil there. And what that does is when you cast out, it's pushing the trace out away from the line. So hopefully then it was gonna prevent the trace from tangling around and hopefully it's gonna catch me the fish. It's all trial and error at the moment at what length is best, but it's handy to have. You can use it to tie stop knots with, or as I said, you can use it for this reason as well. So, I said I'm not sponsored by anyone. This is uh, glow-in-the-dark luminous shrink tubing, not shrink tubing, sorry, silicone tubing. It's the um, two millimeter bore by two meters. And I think that was about three, four pound. So it's worth having a look at it guys and uh, seeing what your opinion is. A carrier bag guys, ideal. Too many marks I turn up to now and too many fishermen leave their mess behind. So, a carrier bag. Pick up other people's rubbish or if you're lucky enough to get that fish that you want to take home, you've got something to take it home in. So, it weighs nothing, folds down to nothing. Simple carrier bag. The last thing I keep in my box, a little bit of three-in-one oil. You never know, drop your reel in the, in the sea or in a rock pool on a rock mark. Just a little bit of three-in-one oil, keep the reel in pristine condition. The last thing you want is your reel to pack up when you're fighting a big fish. So if you've got a sticky bailiff arm, a little bit of three-in-one oil, just sprayed on the joints, loosens it up, makes a big difference. So that's it, guys. That's what I carry in my tackle box. What do you carry in yours? Let me know in the comments below if you carry that amount or if you carry less. 
I like to have enough gear on me to make sure that I can get through a session and I like to help others out. If I'm on a mark and somebody's lost their gear, I've got extra bit that I can help them out with. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up, like, share and subscribe. It's only you guys that can help make this channel grow. Thank you for the support this year. It's been fantastic and I hope to see you again in the new year when this COVID is past and gone and we can all get back out on the mark safely. Have a happy new year all and take care.